Good morning, baseball fans. I'm Chip Tideson here with my associate and co-commentator Richard. And Rick, I gotta say, I'm pretty excited. The first game of the MLB season, that's Mario League Baseball, is starting in just a few moments on the pristine baseball island. And it appears as if Peach and Toadsworth are welcoming our players. And I gotta say, we got a lot of talent this season. It is shaking up to be an excellent excellent season as they look out on this lighthouse over their field but let's be real you guys did not come here to listen to me talk you came to watch some baseball it looks like the players are running towards the stadium taking the field we got a packed house here tonight uh, and yes they are using their magic to transform the Wii remotes into bats and balls as per tradition and it appears Mario is throwing at the first pitch and Daisy cracks it out of the park literally into another stadium and Toad is going oh but he runs into one of those icy boys from Smash but Blue Toad makes the save that is a team player right there now Wario is getting the ball it is on that manhole cover but ooh rookie mistake right there rookie mistake can't afford to be making mistakes like that but Yoshi is going for the dive oh but it's over the pipe and Birdo looks on, does not really care that much. But Diddy Kong makes the catch. Don't know where Yoshi went, but oh, this barrel. Oh, but Donkey Kong is there for the save once again. That is a good father right there. And now Donkey Kong's up at bat, using a glove. Didn't know that was allowed. Yoshi is going. Oh, but Wario and Waluigi are literally attempting to murder Yoshi. He makes the superhero catch, gets Donkey Kong out. Throwing it around, Peach gets the ball, passes it to Mario, and apparently Donkey Kong is still going. Pretty sure he got out, but doesn't matter. Oh! And just a despicable, despicable act of cheatery right there, but... Oh, Mario sees some... Oh! 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 Mario Super Sluggers is the best Mario sports game ever made, and if you disagree, you're wrong, and I hate you. Alright, alright. Obviously, I'm just kidding. It's just that, whenever I hear people talk about the best Mario sports games, I always hear people say Mario Strikers as the de facto best one. And, well, look, I'll be honest, I haven't played it, I'm sure it's great, but, at best, it is second place. And today... I'm going to convince you of just that. But what is it about Super Sluggers that sets it above the rest? Well, for one, the disc has a baseball on it. Does Mario Strikers have a baseball on the disc? I mean, pro probably not. It's a it's a soccer game, so I I mean it might have a might have a soccer ball. I I never like I said I never played it, so I don't. But I'm getting off track. If I want to get to the bottom of exactly why this game is so great, we're going to have to break it down piece by piece. And what better place to start than with the gameplay? I'm just going to assume that if you are a human being, you have played or at least know the gist of Wii Sports Baseball. On the off chance that a cat is watching this video though, you can learn more about it by clicking that card. That's right, Gorilla Marketing, give me all those views. Basically, Super Sluggers is like that, only dialed up to about a million. It's like if baseball was actually exciting. Like Wii Sports, you pitch or bat by swinging the Wii Remote, but there's actually more to it than that. You can throw a bunch of different pitches, aim to some degree, or time your throws and swings with this little circle for better results and a sweet sound. Yeah! Another huge thing that this game has that was missing from Wii Sports is the fielding. You know, like half the game of baseball. Instead of just watching and crossing your fingers that your armless knee will catch the ball, you can run around, throw to whatever base you want, or chase down the runner like a madman. There are a slew of different stadiums to play in that not only provide some new visuals to keep things interesting, but they also have their own unique hazards to contend with out in the field that make each game feel different. And for the true Super Sluggers aficionados, 
you can change it to night for even more danger. Mortal Kombat with blood? Child's play! If you haven't endured the horror that is playing baseball on an ice rink with those freezy guys from Smash everywhere, you don't know true fear. Let me ask you something. Does Strikers have a stadium with a train running through it that will always find you at the worst possible moment? Or a massive Wario statue looming in the distance, his greedy eyes piercing into your soul like TJ Eckelberg? Probably not. I also mentioned it earlier, but it wouldn't be a Mario sports game without some good old fashioned super moves and items. As you bat or pitch, you build this little star gauge in the corner, which you can use to unleash a flashy pitcher hit that is basically guaranteed to get you a base hit or a strike. The 12 main captains all have super cool moves with crazy cutscenes and different effects, so Mario can set the ball on fire, probably not safe, but who cares. Wario throws two balls or hits a bomb, I'm pretty sure that's cheating, but again, who cares. And DK just straight up throws a barrel, which come on, that's gotta be a violation or something, that's not even a ball at this point, how am I supposed to hit that? Any non-captain has the same really fast or really hard hit, which is, well, it's fine, I guess. At least they follow the rules. There's also a system in the game called chemistry, where if certain characters are next to each other in the batting lineup, one can throw a shell or something to mess with the fielders. Or, if they're next to each other in the outfield, you can make an awesome home run save, after which you are legally obligated to throw your controller on the ground and scream, let's go, in your opponent's face. Hey, don't look at me, it's the law. But like I said, only characters with chemistry together can pull off these sick moves, so you have to strategically build your team from the game's vast roster in order to ensure maximum coolness. And that is what we call a pretty good segue. The roster! This game has all the Nintendo characters you know and love from Mario's vast lexicon. Good guys, bad guys, Whatever the heck Birdo is supposed to be, heh, they even got the whole Donkey Kong crew here. They have just about every character you could ever want. They even have some characters that nobody really wanted. Piatas? Yeah, why not? Critters? Who are they? Who cares? Bring them in. Baby Donkey Kong? Pretty sure that's not even a real thing, but I'll let it slide. Welcome aboard! The Nokis? I no, you know what? I can't get behind that one. I can't think of a single situation where I'd want a freaking Noki on my team. Literally not worth the time it took to code them. And there's three of these idiots. But thankfully, the roster's big enough to where you can easily avoid these abominations. In fact, after choosing a team captain from one of 12 options, you have the ability to craft whatever team you want. Whether you're all about the numbers, trying to max out your chemistry, or just want to build a team of all your favorites, you can do that. And you would be wrong, because there's only one team that is definitively the best. Allow me to welcome to the field, the Peach Monarchs. First up is the captain, the royal princess herself. Why Peach? Because we rule this island. And right behind her, the fearless Toad Brigade. You'll never find a group of seven mushroom men more skilled in the art of America's self-proclaimed favorite pastime. You've got the speed of Red Toad, the also speed of Blue Toad, and then Yellow Toad with its with its speed, and then there's there's Green Toad who's who's fast, and then uh, Toadette's even a little bit faster, yeah. But uh, but then there's Purple Toad, the apex of the Toad species, the perfect life form. Don't let his small stature and mediocre stats confuse you. Purple Toad is an absolute monster. When it's got a bat in hand, staring down the pitcher from across the field, it's game over. Every single ball that comes its way is cracked out of the park. I don't know why, and we probably never will. Some things are just above the grasp of human comprehension. Praise be to Purple Toad, may he one day save us all. And to round off the Toad Brigade, we've got Toadsworth, who, who well, I'll be honest, he kind of sucks, we just haven't figured out a nice way to cut him yet. And rounding out the team is Magic Koopa, who, well, <laughs> Super moves? Who needs them? 
Magic Hoopa's got the dirtiest changeup in the game. Just look at this team. Remember these faces? Because they'll soon be etched into the Baseball Hall of Fame. No team has ever been better than the Monarchs. And none ever will. Show me one team in Mario Strikers who can hold a candle to their glory. Oh wait, sick of the regular baseball grind? <laughs> no you're not! How dare you spit in the face of this divine gift! Say you've grown tired of the most fun game ever conceived! But if you are, don't worry, this game is silly with extra modes. There's Toy Field, where it basically stops pretending to be a sports game and goes full party mode. And it's awesome. You've got points, items, tackles, end game bonus points, the works. It's great, but try your best to get four people playing because I swear those CPUs cheat. Stop, Noki! Nobody likes you. Go back to the fiery depths of hell from whence you came. And just when it couldn't get any better, BAM! That's right, we've got ourselves a single player campaign. It's well, I'll be honest, it's just a bunch of mini games and fetch quests, but running around in the overworld was super cool as a kid, so it's alright in my book. And it's also how you unlock a bunch of characters in stadiums, so it's pretty tight. And speaking of mini games, if you want to cut the running around and get right to the chase, you totally can! But I'm not gonna lie, they're all pretty boring. Maybe just stick with what the game does best, and that's hitting bangers with Purple Toad. We truly don't deserve him. He will be the one to end the Noki Plague with his trustworthy Louisville slugger that he, I don't know, pulled from a stone or something. And that's Super Sluggers. I guess for the TLDR of the review, this game is fun, I don't know what else to say. But, if you did enjoy this episode, let me know by leaving a like, or more importantly, leave a comment let me know what you thought. I'm still new to this thing, so any comments, suggestions would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more from me, you can subscribe to get notified when new videos come out, or you can follow me on Twitter, at the Chiptide, to stay up to date on whatever shenanigans I get up to on there. If you don't want to wait for the next episode, you can click on one of the things floating around my head. Even I don't know what they're going to be. I mean, I haven't put them in yet, but I'm sure it'll lead you somewhere great. And I will see you then. But until then, don't forget to take it easy.